Boot suspension bridge is going to be closed for several months after a crash involving a bootleg taxi. And a man who knows all about that bridge joins us now from the Covenant side. And uh, Don Heinrich Tolzman is the author of several books on the Roebling suspension bridge. Uh, Don, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, it is such a spectacular landmark here for those of us in the city. Uh, but what is it that actually got your uh, interest in it to, to where you, you wrote books about it? Well, the, it is a national landmark, as you mentioned, and structurally and architecturally, it's just a masterpiece of engineering. And I got really interested in the man who created it, John Roebling. He was really an engineering genius, but much, much more than that, he was a Renaissance man. He played the piano, played the flute. He wrote about philosophy and theology, and he spent his evenings over and uh, across the river and over the Rhine in some of our beer gardens enjoying a fine brew or a glass of wine. So he, he was really a fascinating person and the bridge he built also is all that more important because it's one of the three bridges still standing that he designed. And so it's really a, a, a gem in the crown of the Queen City of the West. That's pretty, that's pretty spectacular. Now, when exactly was the bridge built, sort of completed, and what kind of traffic was going back and forth over the river back then? Well, when it was for, uh, first opened in 1867 on New Year's Day, it was open to pedestrian traffic and then to horse-drawn carriages, and then farmers would drive their, uh, their hogs to market over uh, in Cincinnati. And so... Uh, it was a different kind of uh, traffic that uh, that we have today completely and uh, when the 19th century uh, bore on more traffic started coming on to the bridge and electric streetcars uh, were, were put in place in the 1890s and that's when the bridge was rebuilt and two cables uh, were added to it more truss work and the better the bridge was uh, strengthened with additional uh, beams and anchorages were also built uh, uh, for them for the for this new reconstruction. So, when it was re reconstructed, it was actually twice as strong as it was at the very beginning. Yeah, and with this uh, latest traffic accident uh, it being closed down until about June for repairs to make sure that it's uh, uh, structurally it has integrity, I, I guess there was never any question that it was going to be repaired, right? Oh, there's no question that it would be repaired because. It's really uh, uh, quite structurally st sound, and as a matter of fact, I'd rather drive across this bridge than the Brent Spence Bridge any time. <laughs> oh, yeah, me too. Me I, think too. A, I think a lot of people probably <laughs> feel that way. Hey, Tom, thank you so much for spending some time with us this morning. We definitely appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Right. Fascinating stuff, uh, isn't it? But I, I drive across. Well, I haven't because since the accident. But right. I drive every day. Yeah. I, this way, I, this way, I use to go across the river to go home. I know Union Terminal is your number one in terms of landmarks in this area. That's number two. It had to be number two. Yeah, absolutely.